Hey, Hugh here again. And in this video, I wanted to talk about why I chilled just the first portion of my espresso rather than the entire brew. And the point I wanna make here is that the amount of extract that you chill will make a difference to your coffee. Now, there's no right or wrong with this, but the key point here is that you need to find out what works for you and your style of coffee. So you would have seen me in WBC in Milan running my espressos over the frozen metal rocks, but you'll notice at one point in the extraction, I moved the cups and I allowed the stream to run directly into the cup rather than over the rock. Now, I focused just on 12 grams of the espresso. Now, as you can imagine in a routine, it would have been a lot easier with you know, judges to talk to, shots to pay attention to, a whole lot of things going on. Uh, it would be a lot easier to just run that shot over the rock for the entire period. And the reason why I chose to just run 12 grams over the shot is because after a lot of sensory testing, a lot of different coffees, different roast profiles, we found that the amount that you extract chill will affect the tactile and taste balance overall structure of that espresso as well. So when I spoke about before, certain aromatic volatile compounds can make a coffee seem sweeter or creamier or, or smoother or rougher in texture. Well, this is especially true when you extract chill different portions of the brew. So for my coffee and generally the way I was approaching espresso, if we extract chilled the entire brew, we'd sacrifice tactile and taste balance. So usually I'd be getting a roughness on the palate. It wouldn't be as smooth and elegant and silky in its expression. So the way we tested this for WBC was we had one person in one room preparing espresso and then a panelist of tasters in another room. No idea what's coming. All coffees are coming with a code written down and we'd be tasting each coffee through the same temperature ranges using the compass. So as you can see from these results, we have very different taste, tactile, and flavor outcomes with different amounts of chilling. Now you can see here that for my coffee, 12 grams for taste and tactile in particular were the best. As we started to extend out that shot too much, usually I'd get roughness on the palate, a little bit of sourness in the acid, which would sacrifice the overall smoothness and texture of the coffee as well. So you can see here, chemically, we have a sharp jump up when you have that five grams of chilling. But then when you go five to 12 and 20 grams, we have very little difference chemically. Now the reason here is because most of the aroma volatile compounds that we extract in coffee are coming in that first portion of the brew. So you can see here that by chilling more, I wasn't necessarily accessing a lot more aroma volatile compounds and we chemically gained most of the benefit in that first portion of the brew. So as you can see here for some research from Professor Chahan, where 95 compounds were measured, and you can see that not a lot of impact happens after that first 10 seconds of chilling. And you can see here, 95% of aroma volatile compounds reach their maximum intensity before 10 seconds of extraction. And when we think about volatility, the really delicate, very volatile compounds are released very easily and quickly with the application of heat. Now these taste differences were not related to the temperature of the espresso. So this has nothing to do with drinking a cooler cup of coffee to give a different taste outcome. All the tasting was done with the compass, temperature reader, and was tasted at the same temperature ranges through cooling. And what was crazy was as the coffee cooled down, the separation between the cups in the taste became wider. So this is a chemical difference. It's nothing to do with temperature perception on the palate. So in terms of cooling, running the extract over the frozen rocks didn't make such a significant difference. It's around three to four degrees drop in temperature for that first 12 grams of espresso and around another three degrees for the rest of the shot. So what this is doing is just bringing that espresso from a little too hot to a really nice drinking temperature straight out of the machine. Now I'm not saying that running the entire extract over the frozen metal rocks can't work. We've just seen Barum Um, New World Barista Champion, running the entire espresso over frozen rocks and he was getting an incredible result. But what I am saying is that the different percentages of extraction over the rock does make a difference. And for a lot of coffees, 
This can sacrifice tactile and taste balance. Now the amount of extract that we chill is definitely coffee dependent. Now the way Borum approached his espresso and the way I approach mine is gonna be different. We're gonna extract at different temperatures. The roast profiles are gonna be from a different approach. The structure of the cup is also gonna be different. So for example, when we apply this technique to filter coffee, some coffees will like to have three pours run over the frozen metal rock. When other coffees, this will bring astringency. I know for example, Liberica has a completely different structure to Arabica. It's got less chlorogenic acid. It's very round and the acidity sits back into the palate in a different way to the way Arabica does. So it's one of the only coffees that I've found with filter coffee running the entire brew doesn't bring us any tactile disadvantage. So possibly with Borum's coffee, he was so round, so smooth, and so perfectly structured in the acid that running that entire extraction over the rock didn't sacrifice tactile. And it was just always gonna be a smooth espresso. For a coffee that's roasted darker, it's gonna have less available volatile aroma compounds to access. It's also gonna have less acidity there as well. So the amount of extract that you chill with these coffees may need to be adjusted to suit that cup profile. And also with less volatile aroma compounds present, you may also find a slightly smaller effect than with a lighter, brighter filter roast, for example. So to sum it up, I'd suggest getting your coffee, approach the extraction the way you would without extract chilling, and then start to apply different amounts of extract chilling to find the best result for you. For example, the way I approach roasting and extraction, I found around 12 to 15 grams seems to work consistently across many different coffee styles from many different origins. But with a different roast profile, different temperatures of extraction, different dose ranges, you're gonna find that you apply that technique differently. So the idea of this video isn't to make this technique more complicated. It's more to give a structured approach to get the best result taste-wise in the cup. Now, once you find your extract chilling range, you'll find that tendency usually sticks for your style of coffee. So for our coffee where I work, I'll generally just go straight for 12 grams and it always seems to be a positive result in the cup. Now, I'd strongly recommend doing this blind with a number of repetitions to find the tendency that works for you. Now, I wanted to put out a huge thank you to Professor Chahan and the Zurich University of Applied Science, the entire team there, who supported us through the development and scientific testing of this technique. I also wanted to put a huge thank you out to Sasha Sestik and Nucleus Coffee Tools, as well as San Remo Coffee Machines for really driving this project, supporting it and allowing it to be tested scientifically in the right way. Now, Paragon Espresso is a device that we've developed to make extract chilling for espresso easier than ever. Now, we're gonna to continue to scientifically test extract chilling to understand in greater depth how this applies to coffee in the hope that we can share more data, more resources and more innovations with you in the future. Thanks for watching.